يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان سوق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we glorify him, we seek his help and his assistance and his aid, and we seek refuge in him from the evil of ourselves, and we turn to him in uh, sincerity, sincerely to him in forgiveness and repentance. And we send our salah and our salam upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions and his family and all those who follow, them, who follow him until the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us to be here uh, on another day of Jumu'ah, the blessed day of Jumu'ah. And this is a very blessed day. It is the best day in the week. It is the best day in the entire week. This week has seven days, and there's no better day than the day of Jumu'ah. And this is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala singled out for us as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be our day of uh, primary worship. Of course, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the week and throughout the year. But well, we have the special Salatul Jumu'ah on this day and special service on this day as opposed to the other days. And this is through the divine will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He preserved for us the day of Jumu'ah. And He diverted the day of Jumu'ah from the other nations. As it comes in the hadith, uh, Rasulullah says, Adallallahu anil Jumu'ati man kana qablana. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He diverted the day of Jumu'ah from those who came before us. So the Jews, فَكَانَ لِلْيَهُودِ يَوْمُ السَّبْتِ So the Jews, they had the day of Saturday, as their holy day. وَكَانَ لِلْنِصَارَ يَوْمُ الْأَحَدِ And the Christians, they had the day of Sunday. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came, and فَجَاءَ اللَّهُ بِنَا فَهَدَانَا لِلْجُمْعَةِ لِيَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came, and He guided us to the day of Jumu'ah. And the hadith continues that, we are the last, we're the last nation to come, but we will be the first to be judged on the day of judgment. So we have the distinction of being the last in this life, and it is a, good, uh, a distinction for us, and it's also a distinction for us to be the first on the day of judgment, the first to be judged. And this goes according to the order. So our holy day comes first. Yawm al Jumu'ah comes before Saturday, and it comes before Sunday. And then the Jews have the Saturday, and the Christians have Sunday. But we have the first day of the week, or the first uh, of these uh, holy days, which is the day of Jumu'ah. And just like that, on the day of judgment, we will be the first to be judged uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the plains of the day of judgment. So this is a blessed day. And Rasulullah says in hadith, إِنَّ مِنْ أَفْضَلِ أَيَّامِكُمْ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ That the best of your days is the day of Jumu'ah. And Rasulullah goes on to mention a number of uh, distinguishing qualities of the day of Jumu'ah. It is the day in which Allah created Adam alayhi salam. It is the day in which Adam alayhi salam came down to earth. It is the day in which the trumpet will be blown and a few other things. So this is a significant day and it is uh, a blessed day. And there are a number of virtues and adab associated with the day of Jumu'ah. Amongst them, of course, is coming and listening to the khutbah and offering the Salatul Jumu'ah. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ فَاسْعَوْا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعُ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ All you who have believed, when the call to Jumu'ah is made, then rush towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave off trade and leave off work and leave off anything else. That is better for you if you only knew. So from the best things that we can do on the day of Jumu'ah is coming here, listening to the khutbah and praying the Salatul Jumu'ah, which is of course a man mandatory on the males who have reached the age of responsibility. And associated with the Jumu'ah is coming early, coming early to the Jumu'ah and taking a bath before and wearing your best and finest clothing and putting on the itr or uh, perfume for the men. Wearing your best clothes, coming in your best uh, display 
for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And amongst the things that we should also busy ourselves with on the day of Jumu'ah is dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and calling upon Him. Dua, of course, is legislated at all times. But especially on the day of Jumu'ah, there is a specific and special time in which if a servant reaches that time and he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his dua will be answered. فِيهِ سَاعَةٌ لَا يُوَافِقُهَا عَبْدٌ مُسْلِمٌ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي يَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ شَيْئًا إِلَّا أَعْطَاهُ إِيَّا There is a specific time in, on the day of Jumu'ah. And this time, we don't know exactly when it is. But there is a specific time if a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will answer him and give him whatever he wants. From the things that we can do on the day of Jumu'ah is recitation of Surah Al-Kahf. In which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that it is a light for the person who reads it from one Jumu'ah until the next, and from the things that we can do on the day of Jumu'ah, and from amongst the best things that we can do, is to send salah and salam upon the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is amongst the best things that we can do on the day of Jumu'ah. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in hadith, "Inna min afdali ayyamikum yawm al Jumu'ah." فَأَكْثِرُوا عَلَيَّ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ فِيهِ The best of your days is the day of Jumu'ah. So increase in your salah and your salam, salam on me on the day of Jumu'ah. Increase in it. It is legislated at all times. It is recommended to give salah and salam on Rasulullah throughout the, the week, throughout the day. But especially on the day of Jumu'ah, Rasulullah says to increase. Make it even more. Make it even more. مَنْ صَلَّى عَلَيَّ Wahidatan sallallahu alayhi ashran. Rasulullah says, whoever sends salah on me one time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his salah on that person ten times over. So especially on the day of Jumu'ah, it is highly encouraged to increase in sending salah and salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Indeed, Allah and his angels, they make salah on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslim. Commands us to also make salah and uh, taslim upon his messenger. So this is something that Allah has commanded us to do. And the benefit comes back to us. The benefit comes back to us. As Rasulullah says in hadith, whoever sends salah on me one time, man salla alayya wahidatan, sallallahu alayhi ashran. Allah will return that to him tenfold. Allah will increase it tenfold. And this is beyond the, the, the default of having deeds multiplied by ten. We know that any good deed that we do, it is automatically multiplied by ten. The scholars have mentioned this of ten when we send salah on Rasulullah This is not talking about the normal ten increase multiplication of any good deed. This is a level even beyond that. That whoever sends salah on the Messenger وسلم, one time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send salah on that person Ten times over. What does it mean that we send salah on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? As we know, this word salah, this is what uh, we commonly refer to as the prayer, the prayer that we pray five times a day. So, how is it that we are asking to send salah on Rasulullah sallallahu And this is something that can cause confusion amongst people. And this is something that the non-Muslims they use as an attack against Islam. You guys pray to the Prophet sallallahu You send salah on him, meaning you pray to him. And Allah sends his salah on him, meaning Allah is praying to him. And they come with all these doubts. So it's very important that this is something we are doing over and over again. We have to know what does it mean when we say we send our salah and our salam on Rasulullah sallallahu The majority of scholars have said that the salah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means his rahmah. Salatullahi ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rahmatuhu. It is his rahmah. Allah showing his rahmah and mercy to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And salah from the angels to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is they are praying for his forgiveness. Salatu min al malaikati al maghfira. That when the angels make salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is they're seeking his for, uh, the forgiveness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a dua from everybody else, from the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from amongst the human beings. Then this is our dua. We are making dua for Allah, uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless Rasulullah and forgive him and have mercy on him. So 
It is not that Allah is praying to Rasulullah or that we are praying to Rasulullah Rather, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase Rasulullah in blessings and in rank and to show his mercy and his forgiveness to him. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends his salah on the lam, it is Allah's mercy. Allah is showing his mercy to Rasulullah And this is one view from amongst the scholars. Uh, but the scholars have also mentioned a few other views. Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he mentions, after mentioning several views, he says that the most preferable uh, and likely of these opinions concerning what does it mean to give salah, what does it mean for Allah to give his salah on the Nabi sallallahu is that it means Allah's praising and honoring of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So when Allah sends his salah, when we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, oh Allah send your salah on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa it means that Allah is praising Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he is honoring him. And when we send our salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and when the angels send their salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it is us asking Allah to praise and send his praise and his honoring of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So it either means Salah upon the Prophet ﷺ from Allah mercy or Allah's praise for him. And from the believers, it is our dua for him. And from the angels, it is either they're asking forgiveness or it is they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to praise and honor the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, as we have mentioned, sending salah and salam on the Prophet ﷺ has many virtues. And uh, Rasulullah SAW says in hadith, Awla nasi bi yawm qiyamati. أكثرهم علي صلاة that the closest people to me those who will be closest to me on the day of judgment will be those who send the most salah upon me the closest to me on the day of judgment will be those who send the most salah on me and in another hadith a man came to the Rasulullah and he asked him when is the hour and Rasulullah asked him what did you prepare for it what have you prepared for the hour and he said that I did not prepare much Except that I prepared love of Allah and His Messenger. And so Rasulullah said to him, Al Maru Ma'aman Ahab, that a person will be with whoever they love. So even if your deeds are not as much as you want, want it to be, just having the love of Rasulullah and increasing in the salawat is enough to raise your rank uh, on Yawm Al Qiyam. And on the flip side, Rasulullah has also warned us about those who are negligent when it comes to not being diligent in sending salah and salam on him. He says in hadith, رَغِبَ أَنْفُ رَجُلٍ رَغِيمَ أَنْفُ رَجُلٍ ذُكِرْتُ عِنَّهُ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْهِ That may he be wretched, the one who my name is mentioned, I mention in his presence, and he does not send salah upon me. So Rasulullah makes dua against this person whose name is mentioned, his name is mentioned in that person's presence. And he does not send salah upon him. And the hadith continues that Rasulullah also made dua against the person who reaches the month of Ramadan and he does not have his sins forgiven. And then the third person he made dua against, the one who reaches his parents in old age and he is not forgiven and he does not attain Allah's paradise because of his service to his parents. So in these three uh, individuals, Rasulullah makes dua against them. And for Rasulullah to make dua against somebody, it is a major matter. We don't want to be on the receiving end of Rasulullah making dua against us. But he has made dua against the one who his name is mentioned in a person's presence and he does not send salah and salam upon him. In another hadith, Rasulullah says that the bakhil, al bakhilu, man dukirtu indahu falam yusalli alayh. The miserly person. Who is the miserly person? Not the person who is. Uh, greedy and doesn't want to give up his wealth. The miserly person is the one who, when my name is mentioned, he does not send salah upon me. Rasulullah calls that person miserly. He's miserly. If he does not send the salah upon him when the Prophet's name is mentioned. So this is one of the best deeds that we can do on the day of Jumu'ah, especially, and continuing on uh, throughout the rest of the week to continuously send salah and salam upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is no such thing as too much salah upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As much as you can do, it is praiseworthy. Uh, one of the Sahabi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ubay ibn Ka'b, and he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inni uh, I make salah upon you a lot. I do a lot of salah, salawat upon you. 
Uh, and then he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So how much should I, when I'm making a dua, when I make a dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, how much of that dua should I reserve for making salah upon you? And so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said to him, Ma'shit, however, however much you want, however much you want, then you can make your dua and include salah upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he continued, he said, Ar-Rubr, should I dedicate one-fourth of my dua to making salah upon you? Rasulullah said, Ma shi'ta fa in zitta fa huwa khayrun lak. You can do that, you can do one-fourth. But if you increase, then it is better for you. And then he said, Anis, should I dedicate half of my dua in sending a salah upon you? And Rasulullah SAW answered, he gave the same answer, he said, uh, In shi'ta fa in zitta fa huwa khayrun lak. That you can do that, no problem, but if you increase, then this will be even better for you. And then he said, Fathuluthan, or Fathuluthain, two thirds, should I dedicate two thirds of my dua to sending salah upon you? And Rasulullah SAW gave the same answer, In shi'ta fa in zitta fa huwa khayrun lak. Then yes, you can do so, but if you increase, then that is even better. And then he said, Ubay ibn Ka'bi said, Aj'alu lak salati kullaha. Should I make my entire dua just for sending salah upon you? And Rasulullah SAW said, uh, he said, Rasulullah said that if you do that, if you dedicate your entire dua, you ignore your own needs and your own wants, and you spend your entire dua just sending salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa all of your worries will be taken care of and your sins will be forgiven. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to send his salah and salam upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. صلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين so from the best deeds that we can do on the day of Jum'ah and outside of the day of Jum'ah is increasing in our salah and salam upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we have said, this is not restricted just to the day of Jum'ah. This is throughout the week, throughout the day, throughout the year. And our scholars have mentioned that there are instances in which the salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is even more emphasized. And Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah in his book Jala'u Al-Afham, he mentions 41 instances in which the Salah upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is highly emphasized, if not obligatory. We'll mention a few of those. The first is to send Salah upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the final tashahud. And according to many of the scholars, this is a pillar from the pillars of the Salah. If you do not do this, your Salah is not valid. To say at the end of your Salah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama salli ala Ibrahim until the end. This is, according to a number of scholars, this is a rukun. Min arkan salah It is a pillar from the pillars of the salah. The salah is not valid without it. Also, from the times in which it is emphasized to send salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is at the end of the qunut, the qunut which we make in our witr, uh, in our daily witr salah. At the end, after we make the dua uh, al qunut, Allahumma mahdina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man At the end, it is recommended, highly recommended, to also end with sending salah and salam upon the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. From the emphasized times to send salah upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well is in the Salatul Janazah. And according to many of the scholars, the Salatul Janazah is not valid unless you send salah upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the second takbirah, after the second takbirah. Also from the times that it's emphasized to send salah upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is right here in the Jum'ah Khutbah. And according to many of the scholars, the Khutbah is not valid unless the salah is sent upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in both the first and the second khutbah. As well as after the adhan, sending salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the adhan. Rasulullah says in hadith, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمُ الْمُؤَذِّنْ فَقُورُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُ ثُمَّ صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ When you hear the mu'adhin, then say as he, as he is saying. And then after that, send salah upon me. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ صَلَّ عَلَيَّ صَلَاةً صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِهَا عَشْرًا So whoever sends salah upon me one time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sell salah of that person ten times over. And then after that, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant Rasulullah wa sallam the wasila, the intercession. So this is also something highly uh, encouraged. Many of us, unfortunately, the only time we hear the adhan is 
during the uh, adhan of the khutbah and we don't have that opportunity to hear the adhan either because we're not coming to the masjid or when we come to the masjid we are only coming for the uh, for the, uh, the beginning of the salah we're not there for the adhan so dedicate some time come early at, at least for the salat al jumu'ah hear the adhan send salah upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi afterwards and make the dua uh, that is to be made after the adhan once or twice during the week come for the salah come a bit extra early adhan over here at the masjid is 10 minutes before the salah hear the adhan say the dua after the adhan send salah upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also from the emphasize times to make salah upon the Nabi وسلم, is in the uh, dua, whenever you are making dua, whenever you are making dua. Rasulullah once saw a man, he was making dua and he did not praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he did not send salah upon the Nabi وسلم. And so Rasulullah وسلم, said about that man, Ajila hada. this man has rushed, he has made, he's hastened. Uh, and then Rasulullah taught us the ad- etiquettes and manners when we make dua. إذا صلى أحدكم meaning when one of you makes dua فليبدأ بتحميد ربه سبحانه وتعالى whenever one of you makes dua let him start the first thing you do is start by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى ثم يصلي على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and then let him send salah upon the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم يدعو بعد بما بما شاء and then afterwards after he begins by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى and sending salah upon the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم then let him make dua for whatever he wants after that but first begin by sending, uh, by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending the salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then ask for whatever you want, and then when you are finished, then end the same way. End by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and sending salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the times it is emphasized to also send salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is when you are, whenever you enter the masjid. Whenever you enter the masjid. إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ masjid فَلْيُسَلِّمْ عَلَى النَّبِي Whenever one of you enters the masjid, then let him send uh, the taslim upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then also say the, uh, the dua Allahumma uh, aftahdi abwaab rahmatik and then also the dua for exit the masjid and same thing send salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abdu has mentioned as well the day of Jumu'ah is a highly emphasized time to send salah upon the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout the day throughout the entire day not just during the, uh, the Salat al-Jumu'ah or when we hear the, Nabi, the name of the, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout the day from the beginning of the Yawm al-Jumu'ah until the end whenever you have some free time and extra time use it to send Salat upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when you enter the morning on an everyday basis and you enter the evening send Salat upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and lastly whenever his name is mentioned whenever his name is mentioned then make that habit Get into that habit of always sending salah and salam upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do not be who the Rasulullah described as being miserly, being the bakhil, the miserly person. When his name is mentioned, that person does not send salah upon him. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to send his salah and his salam upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, to have mercy on us, to give us the best in this life and the best in the next life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the suffering uh, that is uh, going on to our brothers and sisters in various parts of the world, especially in uh, Palestine and other parts of the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate their suffering, to grant them ease uh, from their hardship, and to grant them victory over their adversaries. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما أو يهو بليف سن صلاة أن سلام أبان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة